Welcome back to Powerful Nonsense, the podcast. The five star, five star, five star, five star, five star podcast. <laughs> That's right, five stars. We have a little bit of a different episode for you today. We're discussing the documentary Generation Like, which we'll talk about in a moment. But first, to introduce the man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. The Turkish Delight, Jim Mildes. Hello, how's it going? Yes, good. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I will. Uh, it's my name. Ingram, name. everyone. Thanks. Cool. Should we get cracking? <laughs> Cutting me off. Just taking over my job. <laughs> do you not like what I do, Jim? <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, we are going to be presenting a little bit of a different episode to you today. We are discussing the documentary Generation Like, um, which I don't know when it came out. I think it was quite recent, I assume. Yeah, it was at the beginning of the month, I believe, and it was in on PBS, which I think is an American channel, which is why... We it's very managed, hard for us to actually It was hard for us to view it, but we found it on YouTube for a little while. Yeah. And we found it quite interesting. Yes, it certainly was. Um, so, uh, first of all, let's just give it a little bit of a rundown of actually what Generation Like was about, and then we'll go into our quote and then discuss. Okay, so um, Generation Like was a documentary sort of exploring how, sort of how likes, retweets, this whole social media hype has sort of is starting to use young people as sort of maybe potentially marketing devices, but also how much um, a lot of young people are actually benefiting from these new platforms such as YouTube, um, Instagram. And so it was a really good look into maybe an area in which we're moving towards, but it was also showing that actually there could be a darker side to all of this. So mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was a really interesting topic and it's something mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about because I think I love all this new sort of technology. Plus you're a social media marketer kind of guy aren't you yeah so i mean to be honest a lot of the stuff on there i could relate to really a lot especially they had a lot of um discussion with agencies and i know in the past the companies i've worked with have used these sort of methods and techniques and so i just thought it was really interesting i thought yeah it's definitely worth a, a discussion okay cool so um that's a general overview of what the documentary is about so gem far us away with the appropriate quote Appropriate. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So basically, this uh, quote is by Seth Godin, and he says, marketing is a contest for people's attention. And I think that's really, really relevant because I think nowadays more and more things are... It's, we're so hyperdrive into this sort of connected world, and so attention is becoming more and more scarce. It's mm -hmm. so hard to get people's attention. People's on their mobile phones, on their computers, and everybody's busy and so yeah it's becoming a much harder job for marketers to to get attention and the right attention yeah definitely so um let's start then with um actual the platforms themselves and facebook and twitter and all that sort of stuff and how young people are utilizing those and and kind of what is what is generation like when when the documentary refers to generation like what are they referring to I think what they were referring to is the fact that obviously these sort of new ways of um, whether you like something, whether you retweet something, it's becoming, I think we spoke about being a sort of a currency, but mm -hmm. it's also this way that young people are now building up their personalities through liking, through uh, um, associating themselves with certain brands. Um, I think we also sp spoke about, I mean, how um, these young people are now wanting to Put a, put a kind of veil up of who they believe they are, who they wish they were, and mm -hmm. these sort of channels are allowing them to kind of create these personas or these dream avatars of themselves. And mm -hmm. so I think that's what Generation Light was trying to say. But it was also saying, well, are these are these media are these big companies, these big conglomerates, are they kind of molding what our young people believe they should be perceiving yeah. themselves to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the documentary refers to um, MTV back in the late 90s, early noughties, um, and all the sorts of shows that we would have watched when we were teenagers, <clears throat> um, like Cribs. Is it Cribs? Yeah. That they used to MTV show you around Cribs the house? And yeah. some millionaire shows you, some maybe Limp Biscuit shows you around his mansion. And yeah. I mean, we all brought up thinking, oh, that's what I want. I want to have that yeah. now. And I, I remember seeing one house, actually, where they had, they custom built it and they had a elevator going up to the master bedroom and that was the only way you could get to the master bedroom. And I was like, that's what I want in my mansion when I'm older. And stuff like that. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, <clears throat> so the documentary talks about um, how MTV used to be the platform to um, kind of show 
kids what they could be, what they could enjoy, uh, what success could be, um, and also helping kind of, I don't want to use the word manipulate, but kind of influence, I think it's probably a better word, uh, influence their tastes and things and things like that. Um, and how that was a massive giant, particularly in the States more so than over here, um, massive giant in in the States for um, kind of influencing young people and how now social media has become that major platform, the likes of Facebook and Twitter in particular, um, and kind of how, how now, as you say, the likes and retweets and stuff have become a currency. Um, how do you think, what, like, what are the effects of that? I, I think what the documentary uh, maker was trying, well, what I saw the documentary maker was trying to say here is that initially, if we go back to MTV, you watch TV, you watch the episode and you switch it off, bam, TV's off. Nowadays, we're so engulfed in social social media, but we actually mix our own personal lives into this social media. We're sharing pictures ourselves, we've got our parents, we've got our cousins mm-hmm. all on social media, but th- that has become the channel to which we are now marketed to. And so mm-hmm. I think this, the, the thing he he's becoming afraid of is the fact that there's this massive blurred line between our actual real lives, our actual real personalities, and then what, what, what we're being marketed to uh, like the products we've been marketed at mm-hmm. as well and how is it dangerous that they're so combined together are we are we losing touch of who we are through these yeah sort of well, channels i think it's um shrini from the unmistakable creative who always refers to facebook as uh everyone's highlight reel um and actually i think it's uh, historians have been saying that the great thing about all of the social media is the fact that um, we're actually going to have a very complete record of human history from now on, because it's all going to be unless unless Facebook or Google or whatever go, we're shutting down our service. You, that's it; it's gone. Until that point, we're going to have a very very consistent view of human history to the date, to the minute, everything so detailed. Um, but the issue is going to be is that actually it's not going to be a true reflection of human history. Because people only put online what they want people to see. So uh, if you look at, if you're comparing to other people around you and you're looking, like the amount of times I've gone on Facebook and I'm in a really bad mood because I've had a really bad day, something's gone wrong, um, you know, and I see someone's off on holiday in the Bahamas, for example, and I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> Sorry for the explicit <laughs> word there, but it's <laughs> just like, why? Why do you get to do that? And then you feel bad because you're like, you've got such a much better life than me. And it's not necessarily the case, but that's the bit they t- they like to share. Um, and that becomes the identity with which you relate to them. Mm-hmm. Um, like There was a girl that I used to know at school that recently... Uh, posted something um, about how much weight she'd lost because apparently she was huge. She since leaving school, she had got to a very big size and had done something about it. But I didn't know she got that big because she didn't share that. I just assumed she was she was doing ad- the selfies from up high, right? No, she just wasn't putting <laughs> photos of uh, herself. Okay. <laughs> so naturally, I assumed that she was just she looked exactly the same as she did maybe just a few years older but mm-hmm. otherwise exactly the same and she's gone out and stripped the pounds and now she's putting photos up of herself and i'm like oh my god like i completely missed that because yeah. i didn't you obviously didn't share that of yourself because it's a it negative wasn't thing. The, it wasn't the persona that she wanted people exactly to see. exactly um and i think that that is very telling of what generation like um is it's this it's almost an alter ego. It's an online alter ego. Um, you can be who you want to be online. And unless people know you physically, they're never going to question that that is you. And that is what your life is. So is it sort of giving our sort of reign to create these sort of, I mean, we looked at MTV Cribs and we were like, yeah, I want to have that. Is this sort of giving us that sort of where we can, in a way, create it in real life. I think I was um, sort of like talking about how my sister's on Instagram and she creates herself looking all sort of glamorous and all these pictures and I see her in the morning looking a state with her hair up <laughs> in the air and stuff. And it's like, like you say, it's very selective. You can, in some ways, you can kind of um, select that, yeah, create that persona. It's like when you're on Sims, you choose your character you want to be, you, <laughs> yeah. you choose the, the way you want to be perceived. But then is, is that having like a detrimental effect on the young people? Is that really warping 
um, their own beliefs of who they are. I mean, people are saying nowadays that, um, I mean, scientists are proving that um, these young kids are getting dopamine rushes from the amount of likes they get. Mm. And they're saying that when people see, I mean, yeah, see that you've got a thousand or how many likes or you're associated with somebody who they want to associate, suddenly people are all following that person. Like if, if, um, if I think one of the girls on documentary was saying that she got like re- uh, retweeted by one of the, um, one of the actors from uh, Catching Fire, mm-hmm. the film, um, and suddenly all her likes went through, um, her followers went through the roof. <laughs> well, I mean, even, even as you say, just like the, the dopamine rush of, you know, which, which, if I'm right in thinking, is the good, feel good yeah. hormone, right? Basically, what you get when you eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, I, <laughs> and I'm going to admit this <laughs> openly to the world, uh, I was watching a series called Peaky Blinders. Um, and absolutely fancied the pants off the lead actress. Absolutely fancied the pants off her. I just put a tweet out. I didn't even mention her. I didn't even tag her. I didn't even know she was on Twitter. I just put, I've got to admit it, I fancied the pants out of Annabelle Wallace. Um, and that was that was pretty much all the tweet said. And within five minutes, she had favorited it. And I was like, <gasps> I, I went proper giddy. <laughs> I was running around the flat like, she knows who I am. Yeah. And... <laughs> It proper, I proper just. It was the most childish and ridiculous thing in the world, but it was. It was a real feel-good moment because suddenly you're like, not only does she know who I am, but she knows that I fancy her. And she and actually I, spent the time. She spent the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's seen my picture. She's seen and the my fact that up. I didn't even tag her in it, so she actually mm-hmm. just found that tweet. She didn't. It didn't come up on her phone or anything. She found that tweet and then favorited it. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But then <laughs> again, then it goes back because I think this is the danger here because you're. In your head, I'm not saying that she didn't, but in your mm-hmm. head, how do you know that she, her, her Twitter profile, which a lot of these famous people's pro- profiles are followed by, I mean, I work in social media, so I know there's software that tracks any time someone mentions the phrase or your name, mm-hmm. so it'll pop up and say, oh, this in a stream, this person's mentioned you. And there could be a bot that just, they can create a it's system true. that makes sure that every single tweet with her name in it is automatically favorited by her profile. That's very true, actually. And so, <laughs> that is very true. You're just shattering my dreams. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the problem. It's because that's the illusion. Now you feel that. I mean, I I think one time I I saw Mylene Class and I said, oh, she's um she's as hot as she is in real life. Like I said, so mm-hmm. along those lines. And yeah. And she she favorite. And I got a buzz from that. And it's kind of like. But that buzz could be a false buzz. That could just be her PR agency. And I think yeah. that's a lot of danger. There's a lot of danger there as well. And I think we're all kind of like building these huge illusions around each other like we're all saying well here's this kind of person online here's that person online and i think it's it's so it's it's very dangerous in some ways but then there's a lot of benefits to social media i mean there's uh, all the all the data you can pick up and so that i mean people say like the target is so much better like google picks up all this information so you're going to get valuable information it's more likely that twitter is going to suggest people who like the kind of things you like so i know there's a lot of good elements to it mm-hmm. but i think there's a lot of danger and i think there's still this are not uh, like anonymous. Anon- well, how do you say that word? Anonymous. <laughs> anonymous nature of it, basically, and I think Google's actually trying to combat that with this sort of whole authorship thing. Yeah. Which I think is a great, a, a good move, but it's still, again, it's another way of <laughs> well, linking I, people to the actual content. An interesting observation that I've actually heard is actually that we've become less and less anonymous as time has gone on. Ten years ago, nobody had a clue who anybody on the internet all you had was a username and whatever picture they chose to put up but now because facebook and twitter in particular and google are so integrated into everything that we do it's almost impossible to be anonymous online um because if you're not posting pictures up everybody gets very suspicious like Anytime somebody follows me on Twitter and they've just got an egg as a profile picture, <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm definitely not following you back unless I recognize your name. Uh, for one thing, definitely. Because I'm like, I don't know who you are. You could be anyone. Um, so suddenly everybody's backs get put up a little bit. But also, I mean, the amount of people that you see on Twitter, for example, um, that are these fake accounts where there, it's usually like some person that's pretending to be a supermodel or whatever and then before long they're posting pictures up of oh this is me and this this is me and that and it's clearly a different person in each picture um that's the only real anonymous level that we've got but people kind of work that out these days as well they're going "Mm, okay you're not real but then then if you're saying that which i agree i do believe that this sort of anonymous people are having to put out to be more truthful but then is there a problem there that then 
we don't feel enough. Like if we have to be our true selves online and it's made, it's pushing us towards that. Mm -hmm. Is it now that we're so being pushed towards being as truthful as possible, showing who we are, that we're actually, I mean, everyone's going to have insecurities. Is that why we're building well, I don't, these personas? I don't, think, I don't think we're being pushed to be our true selves. Um, but I think we are being pushed to not be anonymous, if that makes sense. Um, I, I think that I, I, I always look as your online profiles as an alter ego it's your digital avatar um you know i in fact i remember watching a documentary years ago about um world of warcraft players um the positives and negatives and there were so, there were some weird scenarios like there was this one guy that had been playing it for so long that actually when he went out into the real world it felt weird to him he'd actually switched his perception of what the real world and what the fake world was but also there were some really touching stories of you know like disabled people that couldn't walk couldn't really speak um but they were playing on these online games and making friends and stuff and it was like well nobody nobody knows that i i'm disabled unless i've told them so there's no judgment there. no judgment exactly i can be who i want to be online and where, whereas you could could see that see it as a negative for the average person, I think for people in difficult situations like that, it's also a real, real positive that you can be empowered so much to be who you want to be, and nobody's going to take you at face value. Um, well, except they are, but they're only going to take you at face value of what you present to them. But then again, but then again, that's sort of like loading you up. I think if you, I don't know if you've seen Catfish, the documentary, or Catfish, the I program, and basically, so that's where people create personas of themselves, of who they are, like, and so they'll go on Facebook, create a profile, find someone, fall in love with them, and then basically oh, keep it going for years and years. I've heard about this. And then they finally meet up, and it's nothing like. So if you're creating this persona online of who you are, then like you say, if that disabled person then goes and meets that person who's been showing them mm -hmm. care and affection. I've played these um, role-play games online. You meet people and you think, I've been chatting to that person and they send you the picture and you're like, wow, you're nothing like I thought you were. Well, yeah. or, and mm -hmm. it kind of, it's like then all of a sudden, what that if, if that's where the relationship breaks <laughs> down when you actually finally show your true self, then what is the point? Are you just going to hold up this sort of veil the whole time until the truth comes out? Is it not better to just sort of reveal who you are from the off and say, well, this is me, this is who I are. I feel that we do that with the podcast. I feel we're trying to explain this is who we are. This mm -hmm. is what we are interested in. And I, I don't see the point trying to come across as somebody else because at the end of the day, if I ended up meeting up, meeting someone who actually listened to the podcast and they were like, they meet me and say, well, you're nothing like I thought you were. You, you, you sound a lot cooler on the podcast. And you're mm -hmm. a bit of a drip. Of real life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, he is, he I, is think it's, <laughs> I think it's really important that we do become our true selves online. And I think it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous. The more we build, we feed into these personas because mm -hmm. that's so much pressure on, on the young people as well. Like to keep, keep it up. Yeah. Um, it is tough. It is because there are positives and negatives to both. And I'm totally with you in that it, I think honesty is key. Because as you say, you know, if if you do present this persona and then somebody actually finally meets you and you and that persona breaks, like that, you know, should never meet your idols kind of thing, you know, because they'll most likely disappoint you. And it's, it's that kind of thing. But what's happening is, and I mean, it's a phrase that I hate. But it's it's definitely telling, and, and I think it was mentioned a lot in Generation Like as well, is this idea of being Twitter famous. Mm. And YouTube famous. And YouTube and famous. Insta, Insta famous. Thing. Insta famous. Yeah, that was a new one as well. Yeah. Insta famous. And um, you've, become, you've given yourself celebrity status, really, to your audience only, really. Um, so you're not like Hollywood famous. So every, not, you're not a household name, but you have celebrity status of some level. Um, well, you was talking about the guy who was, was it the uh, fanboy who was like a One Direction fanboy? And yeah. He, in the documentary, he, he turns up to the... Um, the One Direction concert. The concert, and suddenly the whole... Everybody's the cheering his name. Erupt. And I mean, he's not particularly, he's not even the, the, the... He's just a fan. Yeah. So now people are fans of fans. <laughs> and how ridiculous is that? How ridiculous is that as a, as a concept? Just... You, <laughs> He's he's you. He he he. Loves but that's what, you what love. he said. He said people relate to me because I'm being that's who true. they are, and maybe maybe that's him. Him being him, true. Set, like we say, like it's all about like the online is become more important to build your audience, mm -hmm. and so he is his audience. 
and he's being true to who he is and suddenly he's got all these followers and so maybe that's a lesson in itself that he didn't come he didn't start you like even when he said where he started his youtube channel just to keep up with his mate when he went off to college so they could see what each other was doing so he didn't start with the persona of i'm going to pretend i'm this massive one no. direction fan <laughs> was it fan girl or fan yeah, yeah. professional fan yeah, girl yeah. professional fan girl so he didn't start off with that he started off saying this is who i am this is what i believe and slowly by slowly people came in it's like we could we could do this podcast and we could pretend that we're some sort of juggernaut businessmen with Warren Buffett and I, yeah, and so yeah. we could we could we could come across that way and but we don't want to obviously <laughs> <laughs> we say modest but yeah but we could come across that way and and then the um we might bring in a few people but the illusion is 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 the, the audience can't build that way because you're not putting out your true self first mm-hmm. yeah so I think that's what that's what I think is dangerous I think it's dangerous because I think too many young people are coming at it with okay the platform's there i'm just gonna create the illusion create the persona where really it needs to work backwards because most of these people who do get this fame and this sort of accolades or get followed or Mm -hmm. whatever you're doing it for it's because they were true to who they are and they shared who they were and people like that and i think maybe people are afraid that people might not like who they are yeah and i think i think that is is a major part of the of the issue and i mean I've seen so many conversations where where people are competing. They go in, oh well, I've got more followers on Twitter than you. What? <laughs> like, why does that even matter? Like, but it does. It particularly to you know to people a little bit younger than us. I mean, they're still the same generation as us, but um, a little bit younger than us, um, like teenagers. You know, it's a big thing. If you've got if you've got over a thousand followers on Twitter, it is huge that's a really big deal to to them and uh in fact i remember i'm a big wrestling fan just a a, a disclaimer there i'm a big wrestling fan and uh i think it was a year or two ago um one of the wrestling companies put out a documentary um about uh some british wrestlers that they and they were in a like reality tv show competition and there was a there was a fight that started out because one of the wrestlers said to the other yeah but how many followers on twitter have you got and he's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but how many have you got? Well, it doesn't matter. Oh, I've got more than you then, haven't I? Why does it matter? And I've pulled on, like, fisticuffs and everything break out. Um, because it, it mattered so much. And I just think that's a really bizarre place to be. But do you think that's... So now, like, obviously we're saying if, if all these lights and stuff are currency, are, are our young people being sort of, like, brought up in a way that now... If if they don't have the followers, if they don't have enough Facebook friends, if they don't have a thousand or a million views on YouTube, are they feeling? Is that affecting how they feel? Do they feel less of a person? Do they feel? Oh, or, I think so. But has that been going on forever? Is it just now on another platform? Did that's yeah. all I'm saying. I mean, we could say that as oh poor them, but we probably had the same. Like although we had to have physical friends who we knew or who we I went skateboarding well, it, and had friends that I skated with, and yeah, it's that playground scenario, isn't it? Where you know, well, not so much playground, but when you're in senior school, the popularity contest that happens. Now you actually have a measure of your popularity right there on your profile for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you may as well be like on The Sims with a little number above your head, floating above your head saying... What your clout is. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) how many followers you've got. and (laughs) um, and, And people will judge you for that. Um, Which, again, is a... But in the same way you would have been judged by how many friends you had at school uh what whether you played sports or not what if you, you didn't wore, play sports, the clothes you wore, you're wearing. exactly and your your profile your online profile is exactly the same like he relates the guy who did the documentary i've forgotten his name that's terrible um but he says that your face facebook profile reminds him of uh, the posters he used to have around his bedroom and ha- and how his bedroom and what was in his bedroom defined who he was. And now that's all kind of happening online. Except the difference is, is your bedroom is a private place, whereas, of course, your Facebook profile is a public place. But even then, your passions are going to come through because everything you like and everything you retweet and everything you share is kind of going, this interests me on some level. And so... And then, and then that's the thing. How difficult is it for you to remain this alter ego? And how long before ultimately your true self starts to shine through? Because, I mean, I know with my, when I first set my Twitter up, I was like, this is a professional platform. The only stuff that's being posted on here is professional stuff. And then I realized, actually, 
a lot of people didn't give a damn about that sort of <laughs> stuff. They really just didn't care. Yeah. And then I and bef- and it was Facebook. My Facebook page is my personal place for all my friends and my family, and Twitter is my public persona. And before long, they've just merged together. Mm-hmm. So is is that what is that what online is doing? Is that what digital is doing? I think is it making everybody on that sort of level play field where it's be your true self, expose who mm-hmm. you are and you have to, if you're in, if you'll play it, if you're on it, which everyone has mobiles, everyone has computers, if you're on it, you have to play by the rules, which is expose yourself. And I think, mm-hmm. I think that's what people say. And I think like it's with my mum, like my mum, when I say, Oh, I'm going to pay online with the credit card. And she's like, Oh no, no. You're like, she's like freaking out <laughs> yeah, thinking yeah, that yeah. someone's going to steal, steal the day. But when, but then you look at young people and it's, like they'll easily they'll sign up straight away or they'll use their Facebook login on anything and it doesn't even phase them like there's no yeah. no one you're not saying oh don't, aren't you worried that your your information's on there no it's just they brought you you're brought up with it like yeah. we just do it naturally it just happens yeah. like well I remember when uh, the likes of Foursquare and Facebook check-ins came out and I initially initially got my backup I was like I don't want no, people to know where I am what if people come to find me whilst I'm there like <laughs> I don't want people to know where I am at any one time like why would I want to share that but now if I'm if I am somewhere interesting I'm like wait I've got to check in they bring up the phone well, don't tell that way all, fa- all the podcast fans are going to be following you around just look I've already got a queue of people following me they're outside <laughs> right now can we just not add to that queue please <laughs> yeah we'll add in the background noise after a day yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's true yeah. It's true, and I think that's the thing. I think young people are moving away from that. They don't even consider the fear of somebody kind of taking their, their knowledge or their... Not, they, that's who they are. They're just open. They're just totally open online. Yeah. But one thing I was, I was worried and I was talking to you about is, like, if this is the case, if we are in this sort of hyper-exposure of ourselves and who we are, or we're creating these personas to the point that maybe they're, they're restricting our, our, our actual well-being to the point that we're constantly lying of who we are... Do we need to start like training young people to really start to understand, maybe understand the channels a little bit deeper and understand that, yeah, although that, that lady or that famous person tweeted you, it might not be that famous person or you, just because... You have shattered my dream. I know, that. but it's true. But I think, I think that's, it's, it's so dangerous as well, though. That's mm-hmm. the thing. There is that mm-hmm. you need to kind of be media trained to understand that, yeah, that person might make that video about Skittles or whatever product. But it's more than likely he's been paid for it. And just be aware that all oh, that person should maybe be open to the fact that, yeah, it's been a promotion and be honest with it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, I just think young people need to stop sort of, I think there's a lot of them who we sort of call the um, sort of digital underclass who just, who fall for it all the time. So it's just like that person is so famous and look what they're doing. They're hanging out with One Direction or they're going to the thing and they're so famous. And then that's what they want. And then mm-hmm. it creates them to have that sort of complex, which says, okay, if he's got that, then now I need to build myself to be yeah. this kind of person rather than saying, actually, looking back, right, going back, because you'd take a step back. If you if you understand how the media works, you'll take a step back and you'll say, okay, this is how it was built up. This is where it came from. It's what I do. I like to break down why someone got to that place. When you break it down, it goes back to them being them, their true self. And I think mm-hmm. that's the problem. I think young people come in halfway. They come in when the overnight success who's actually been working on it for say five ten years before yeah suddenly becomes overnight success and they want that fast track and it goes back to why what why a lot of young people want that instant gratification while well, mm-hmm. why online works in that way and it's sort of we jump to the fast track but we're also then kind of by jumping to that fast track we don't know particularly who we are yet and so we're going to create this massive persona that's going to bring its whole whole load of issues and that's why i think yeah training young people early and talking about like being really open. I mean, young people are always going to have complex. Everyone, I have complex. You have complex. Everyone have complexes. But just learn to understand them and learning. And I think online allows people to sort of accept that there are str- they're strange people. You just said online. You just admitted to the world you're a wrestling fan. Someone might look at you and say, "Well, you're 25 going on 26, and you still like wrestling." 24 going on 25. actually. Oh, okay, 24 <laughs> going on 25. But that's what I'm saying. But to say, "Oh, well, you're still into wrestling," that's like. That could be to some people that's a bit of like faux pas. Do you really want to accept it? Do you want to say that? Like, yeah. I mean, you're still single and stuff, so <laughs> <laughs> we can we can cut it out. But that's what I'm saying. But it's just to... it's fine. I'll, I'll openly admit that I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but that honesty. But you'll find that you're now by being honest with who you are, you'll find the people who likely would like to associate with you. Mm-hmm. And that's all I think. And that's why I think the generation like need to 
and be educated to understand. Yeah, I mean, it. I mean, actually, I think, yeah, it's it's interesting because I think the situation is the people that are creating these alter egos are really only going to attract the people that want those alter egos, and likewise, the people that are genuine are going to attract the audience of people who like genuine people and are probably genuine people and themselves. like the stuff that they like, like that the actually like who like. they are yeah. so actually as you say it is quite dangerous because these people with these alter egos are only going to be mixing with people that want that alter ego and want what they have and are either going to pine after it or try and create and replicate and mimic what this other person has done which okay in itself could be quite empowering for someone but yeah I think it's that honesty is the best policy kind of thing of you know if you're just genuine if you're transparent about who you are you're actually probably more likely to get a decent strong following admittedly it's going to take you a lot longer to achieve that um and i think it just goes back to if, if i mean if these musicians and whoever else suddenly get signed up to the agency and they say well you've got to um, take off your clothes and you've got to go in this video and we've got to push you down the stairs and make a funny video out of it. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, that might build me an audience. It might build me, it might get me a million views on YouTube or whatever, but that's not why I went into it. I don't want people who think I'm funny because I can fall downstairs. I came in it because I want the music and I think that's where it gets a bit sort of, there's the boundary mm -hmm. there. It's like, why? Why are you doing these sort of things? And like, is it for the right reason? Or are you just trying to get attention anywhere you can? And I think that's, that's really what you need to look deeper into. I mean, that's more the marketing side of it, but it's the yeah. same with people. If you're using online in a in a false way, in a unrealistic persona of yourself, then you're only you say you're only going to attract the wrong kind of people, and you're going to get the wrong kind of results from what you want out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just want to clarify. I love social media. I love how empowering it Me too. has made totally. everyone. Um, but yeah, the. As I think I said to you uh, earlier this morning, we are still really unsure as to how to use social media. It's a new thing that's only been around really at the capacity that it's been at. What was it? Facebook's 10th birthday this year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Facebook didn't become mainstream, at least in the UK, until probably about 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't set up my profile till 2008. I was still on MySpace for ages. <laughs> Rest in peace, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, social media to the capacity that it's at now has only been really around for the last six or seven years. So it's still a new medium. We still don't really know what the consequences of, of using it will be and, and, you know, how that's particular. And now that the young people are coming into it afresh, having seen how it can be used before they come into it, that's this is the time over the next four or five years where we're really going to start to learn what the do's and don'ts are with social media. And I think that's something that we should definitely be aware of and particularly keep, keep a close eye on these young people. I mean, granted, there are a lot of young people out there that have become hugely successful off of social media um, and that that's a lot of what generation like the, the documentary is about um you know and there are people that have earned six figure salaries off making youtube videos about absolutely nothing <laughs> literally but nothing. an audience <laughs> but they have an audience i mean there's a guy i mean if you've never watched him wheezy waiter i mean he's not a young guy he's middle-aged um but wheezy waiter and he has a massive audience like millions and he just he literally makes videos talking nonsense uh check him out he's he's he's, he's quite he's entertaining but he makes millions mm -hmm. and i think um i think we spoke about a little bit earlier how like these these sort of corporate companies these massive sponsors they kind of they, they have sort of applied that old school i mean now advertising on facebook and i think they were saying how a lot of young people are moving away from it, off mm -hmm. Facebook as now, and it's kind of like they're trying to put that old model onto Facebook. Yeah. But I do think, although we're all, we, well, I'm quite worried for the young people and how they perceive these things, but there's also a lot of young people who know that that's tat and they're trying to market me something and I'm not going to take it. Yeah. And so I think the younger generation actually, although maybe they create these personas online, they're actually hyper aware to when something is false. They know yeah. if someone's trying to sell them something. Yeah. And that's why I think these companies are trying to get even more clever. It's like, okay, so they listen to videos about a guy who hangs himself, I don't know, hangs himself upside down and spins around or does something stupid. Let's try to put the product in there as well and get it into them in a different way. Yeah. But even my little brother says all the time, he's like, when I listen to videos, he's like, oh, you always get that guy who says it in that way, who 
does a video in that sort of style and then they always want to try to sell you something in that way and so yeah. they know when they're being sold to and they know when a video is yeah. legit yeah and so and I think and I mean if you look at like the music video that was made on Generation uh, like uh with the guy that was trying to launch his music career and he was making a music video and he said, look closer. Is this a music vi- uh, video or is this a uh, advert for the new Ford Fiesta? And it was clearly an advert for the new Ford Fiesta. But that wasn't the focus until he kind of made you go, look again. And that is where they're getting very clever with the advertising. And <clears throat> and again, it's, it's, in, it's empowering, but also you have to be wary, I think, and, mm-hmm. and kind of constant vigilance yeah. and all that sort of thing um, but we should probably look at wrapping this up a little bit now yeah no, I just think just really I just think obviously there are the young people who understand it a lot and they really get it they understand when people are trying to sell them something they know that and maybe they just accept that part of this platform is that people will try to sell me something but then there's the other younger ones who maybe could get sort of pulled into it a little mm-hmm. further and maybe as I say get these huge complexes because they're seeing everyone else being this certain way or all this marketing and saying, well, it's, tar- it's so targets them. Oh, well, maybe you need to buy these trainers or your mates, your mates got those trainers. So look, maybe you should get them too. And then that's just put impression there. That's the bit I don't like. And I just think there needs to be that sort of really, I think school, schools especially need to start training young people and to mm-hmm. understand these mediums. But the shame is the schools probably don't understand them less themselves. than the young people themselves. Yeah. So Absolutely. it's a tough one. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, definitely, if you can. I mean, I only got to see half of it because it was pulled down by the time that I got to watch the second half. Um, but if you can uh, give Generation a like, if you are over in the States, or it will probably be somewhere on... No, on Generation like, if you're in the States, you can watch it on the right. actual, I think, the PBS website. I think in the UK, they haven't, they've restricted it, so I'm not too sure about that, but I would love to know what other people think, because yeah, just to get other people's opinions, really, on where you think things are heading, or is this a good thing, is this a bad thing? Yeah, so let's open up the discussion to mm-hmm. the audience. Um, if you do have anything, we, I mean, we can probably put another episode aside for any feedback that we, we get about, about this episode and this issue in particular um, but just send us an email to either myself at wayne at powerfulnonsense.com or Jem at Jem at powerfulnonsense.com and at C-E-M yeah. and um, also if you want to <clears throat> chat to us on Twitter you can do. Which is probably a good way to get in touch with us because I think, yeah. we're, as we say, we're constantly connected yeah. on there so we can get back to you pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so you can Twitter tweet me at uh, Wayne underscore Ingram. And you can Twitter me <laughs> <laughs> at C K Y I L D I Z. And we'll go with uh, another quick, quick plug from Jem. So, yeah, I've got my ebook coming out or should be out pretty damn soon. I hope so anyway. It's called Status Go and it's 10 unlearnings for the digital economy. And that's me sort of rambling on about where I think things are going, how I think um, sort of mindsets need to change for this new economy. And that'll be a free ebook that'll be given away for people who sign up to my newsletter. See, I'm building my audience. <laughs> <laughs> and how do they sign up to your newsletter? Um, just go to powerfulnonsense.com and on the right hand side, I've got my. Um, my box to sign up my subscriber box you can do that there awesome and as always if you um like what it is that you're hearing and what we do here at powerful nonsense uh, please do leave us a review on itunes it is like so helpful gold it is yeah it's, it's, our, it's our currency it's, it's our, our like. country and it makes us feel good i'm sure we get a dopamine rush from it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah please do leave leave a review um it really really does help support uh, what we're doing and continue having these discussions and, and i know we was obviously a little bit off topic to the usual but again this all relates to business this is all about mindfulness in the digital economy we need to really understand these platforms so that we know how to work within them whether that's through our artist endeavors or through our creative endeavors or mm-hmm. business endeavors we we have to know these sort of things i think that is a very good point to end there so generation like check it out and um until next time Have fun. See you later.